Mullins to get to feast your eyes on him. What an opportunity he's been given to win the starting gig up there in Foxborough. Another full slate of preseason action right here on NFL Network. Here's the deal. Friday night, Chiefs welcoming the Vikings to town on Triple Header Saturday, Triple Header Sunday, all right here, all live on NFL Network. And welcome to Good Morning Football. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, whether you're at home, work, school, you're in the UK, you're streaming us on Sky Sports, wherever you might be. Thanks for picking us to hang out with this morning. Nate Burleson, three shows to go. Three shows to go. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Randy Moss. Joined us in the last hour. <laughs> He's got a bright and early. <laughs> really cool. I, I do have to say, uh, Randy, amazing, legend, credible that he came on the show. Still no Calvin Johnson? We, we, five years in, you can't get Calvin Johnson I've on the show? I've asked him time and time again. What does he He's say? He's always said yes. He's just like, we have to schedule it. And once it gets to scheduling, I don't schedule things. Right, I, I, I try to do. pass it off to people. Right, right. So right. if you were to FaceTime him well, in the 9 o'clock hour, wait. he'll answer? Yeah, I'll, I'll text him and tell him, but we might as well get him on Zoom and have him. You if know, he'll do it. I'd love that. We'll see. Peter Schrager, Kyle Brandt, my name is Kay Adams. It is time for the lead block. Lead block. Lead block. Cam Newton absent from Patriots practice due to a misunderstanding of the NFL's COVID-19 protocols for testing away from club facilities. He returns to the team on Thursday. That's a five-day absence. It's only required for for unvaccinated players. Bill Belichick was asked about Cam and the rest of his quarterback room just yesterday. Do you learn as much virtually as, as, as being on the field, or does that put him at a disadvantage not to be out here on the field for a couple of days? Yeah, you know, of course. If we couldn't if we couldn't get anything by practicing, then why do we practice? The fact he's not here does it change your view of, of where things stand at that position? Yeah, we'll evaluate everything the way we always do, based on the information we have. Big opportunity for Mac Jones this week. I mean, everybody, it all. It is. Mac gets like more reps, yeah, more opportunities to sort of close the gap. I don't know how big that gap even is between Mac Jones and Cam Newton. I ask you, Kyle, how will Cam's absence impact the Patriots quarterback competition? Mm-hmm. Question mark? Yeah, maybe. That, that clip is, seems like every other Belichick clip in the history of time until the very end. Until the very end. Is. And we all kind of lit up when we saw it. And he, he doesn't say that. Normally, you just, well, we'll evaluate. He says it is. Actually, yeah, it is a big opportunity, which is – an effusive, gushing answer for Bill Belichick. That means that was a concession on his part that, yeah, there's some stakes here in what's going on. And there should be. Um, there's a million ways to go about this. I, I, I have to say personally, I find it asinine and really frustrating that this is happening because Cam Newton is unvaccinated, particularly as a player who had COVID last year. And just let me take aside the politicizing the vaccines, which I'm not interested in right now. There's a strategic thing here. The, the rules are the rules that the NFL set down. And if you're not vaccinated, you have to comply by these rules or you're going to have issues. And this is not the slot receiver or the tight end three. It's the QB1 who now it happened. All right. There's some time before the season starts and maybe he'll recover and be fine. But like, who's to say it's not going to happen again? And I guess I'm very frustrated, too, because take, set the vaccine aside and COVID aside. There's been so much goodwill with Cam lately. Mm. And it's like, you know, we joke. It's the cam He's back. He's the great teammate. Mac and cheese. It's all smiles. And, like, this gets back to the it's always something with Cam. Like, you can't go six months without Cam doing something that makes you pull your hair out or saying something that makes you roll your eyes. I'm doing both about this. And as far as Mac Jones coming in and taking the job, look, if it happened during game week, it's nuclear. There's still a couple of weeks left, so maybe not. Like, we sat here after the last preseason game and said, Cam's closed the book. It's over. Cam's starting. He looked really good. His arm looked live. It's over. Can Mac Jones actually come in with a couple of good practice days and steal the starting job? I think probably not. I'm just so frustrated personally. I know I'm all over the map with this take, but, like, where the hell are we with this? Will, will it factor into Belichick's decisions later? Like, will this impact just the way it all went down and was handled? There's a question about whether you can rely on Cam. So, yeah, maybe. And, like, can the teammates rely on them? All the guys in the locker room? Are the fans into this? Do people have Cam Newton jerseys in Foxborough? Is there one Patriots fan who's like, I'm in on Cam, I'm way in? Or is it like, I roll, get Mac Jones out there? Because that's sort of how I'm starting to feel. You know, and Kyle, I'll echo you on what the Patriots preach is accountability. Okay. Do your job. Whether you believe in the vaccine or not, or you want to take the vaccine or not, Belichick's top priority is likely winning football games. So this is just a competitive advantage that if you're available to him for five days of practice, it gives you a lot better chance and the team a lot better chance. So I think he's visibly frustrated. I thought the Patriots took the high road with that statement yesterday saying it was a misunderstanding of the COVID test. Well, I assure you it wasn't a misunderstanding on the Patriots side of things. Mm -hmm. Like 
Essentially, Camp thought you could take a, a COVID test off-site on the facility. You had to be in the building. And this is an example of what it's going to be like this season for the unvaccinated players. And Cam Newton's going to be fine. He's not going to be cut. It, maybe he'll lose the job to Mac Jones because of it. I don't know any of that. But for the guys who are the 43rd guy on the roster, mm -hmm. the 48th guy mm -hmm. on the roster, coaches won't have any tolerance for this. They, I can't do this with you on Zoom. And so, if anything, it's an example of the frustration that Belichick showed right there. Imagine you weren't a guy to sure fire, make the team. That's what you have to be thinking mm -hmm. about right now. It's happening across the league. And, you know, the unvaccinated player, based on the rules by the NFL and the NFLPA, is at a great disadvantage this season because it's such a thin wire. You don't even have to get COVID. You just have to be near someone to have COVID. Mm -hmm. And then you have to miss five days because of the close contacts and the way the protocols are. Mm -hmm. Not politicizing this. We're not going there. It is just a clear competitive advantage for the player who is vaccinated over the player who is unvaccinated. In this case, he's in a quarterback race with a rookie who everyone thinks is really coming on strong. Mm -hmm. And now they've got five practices or three practices with the Giants. And it's going to be this inner. And guess who's getting all the number one? Mac. Mac Jones. Mm -hmm. It can only help Mac Jones. It can only hurt Cam mm -hmm. Newton. Yeah, shout out to Mac and Cheese. This is a great opportunity. This is what football is all about. Um, regardless of it being Cam Newton sitting out because of COVID, if it was an injury, if it was any type of mistake that Cam made on the field and Mac Jones had an opportunity to play with the ones at practice and in the last preseason game. Um, but getting back to Bill Belichick, he's usually very monotone and, you know, just call it what it is boring to listen to. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't like playing that game, answering dumb questions, if you will, for a lack of better words from reporters. He, he'll give you uh, the same type of response in the question that you ask. Right. If it's not a good question, he's not going to give you a good answer. But the last, it is. Like, to me, that was almost the most spirited thing I've ever heard him say. I know what you mean. Hmm. Very emphatically. You're right. you know, Two he, words. It is. It is. And, and he, it was the quickest response. And it's almost like he said it with an, with an energy that we don't usually hear from Bill Belichick. Uh, so for Mac Jones, he has to hear that as well. And, and when, I always say coaches and players, they don't talk to the media. They're talking to their team. So he was talking to Mac Jones, mm -hmm. and he was also talking to Cam Newton in that response saying, this is a great opportunity. You want me to translate this for you? Mm -hmm. This is a great opportunity for Mac Jones. And if he does what he needs to do, he can easily win the starting position and be our starter in week one because of Cam Newton sitting out a handful of days due to COVID. It's well said at GMFB with your thoughts on this, of course. You know, I don't know how if, if he's endeared himself to the fan base. I think you think maybe no. I know the media likes him. I'd love to hear from fans. Mm. Patriots fans, you don't hit us up often enough anyway. Let us know how you feel about this Cam Newton situation, about the quarterback competition, and about this news we have this morning. Just about an hour ago, Ian Rappaport broke news. The Patriots are trading their first-round pick, 31st pick overall in the 2018 draft, Sony Michelle, to the Rams. We have an update from Rap Sheet on the compensation and the deal. Compensation update, fifth rounder and sixth rounder this year that converts to a fourth rounder when or if the Rams get a fourth round comp pick. It's complicated, it's kind of messy, but essentially Sony Michelle for a fourth round pick, which is solid value for a former number one pick. Yeah, and this is a couple weeks in the making. We know it's a loaded backfield, but this is also from Sony's side. He wanted to explore their options mm -hmm. as well, knowing how crowded that backfield was. Patriots started shopping them a little bit, and then the Rams make a lot of sense. Thomas Brown is the Rams running backs coach. He played for the Georgia Bulldogs in the early 2000s. Guess who played 10 years later at Georgia? Sony Michelle. They have a relationship. Word got out to L.A. that Sony might be on the block. Daryl Henderson goes down with a little thumb injury. Nothing major, but a thumb injury. Cam Akers, of course, had the Achilles earlier in the offseason. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. And the relationship McVay and Belichick have, it's an open dialogue. It was almost too much of a perfect fit for both sides. Now they get him out there, and the Rams, I mean, Sonny Michel will play on the Rams. Yeah. They're not making a trade if he's not going to get it. This is a team that wants to play the Super Bowl in their backyard at SoFi mm -hmm. Stadium. I'm glad they added a veteran because their eyes are, are on that Super Bowl. So hopefully they get there with a strong running game. We know they did it with C.J. Anderson when Todd Gurley went down mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. He's got them to the dance. And All speaking right. of a Super Bowl, Sean McVay faced the New England Patriots, so he had the game plan for a guy like Sonny Michel. Sonny Michel so played well against the Rams. He knows him very well. At GMFB, we'll break down that trade, of course, all show long.